What's up guys, Ash here, happy Wednesday. And uh, of course today we're talking about Ray's Grenadier. Um, this is of course an updated build. Uh, previous video was a bit older. It's not in line with kind of everything that I wanna do. Uh, I am still working on Alchemist, that is coming, it's in the works. But uh, this, this Grenadier build is insane. And uh, this is going to be the second build ever where I recommend that you guys use it. Um, the first one, of course, being Kylie's Hacker 9 Dragons build. And mind you, I made that build months ago, you know, in between hundreds of hours of troubleshooter time. I still use that build to this day, you know, regardless of difficulty, hard, cruel, challenge, whatever. This is exactly the same, uh, and I absolutely love it. And I'm still gonna do an alternative mastery section, but, you know, the idea is that you really shouldn't need to change this too much to get amazing use out of it. Anyway, let's hop right into it. At a high level, Ray's Grenadier plays primarily as a scout type class. Uh, she can zip through the battlefield with unparalleled speed using Reckless Charge. Uh, this allows her to basically scout out any amount of enemies and deal with them if she wants to or return to the party line. Um, Generally, Grenadier is a bit heavier on damage than Alchemist as well, uh, but both classes can certainly play a support role very well. We'll go ahead and slow this down and uh, so you guys can get a good idea of what's going on here. So um, right before we run here, notice that uh, Ray's usual action time will be 48 and that Giselle is currently at 180, meaning in one action time, uh, Giselle should be up here. Now, as she runs, Notice that she gets up again, and that's actually because of 10 AT from Run, uh, 10 AT from Best Condition, and another 30 AT from Reckless Charge. This is giving her a total of 50 AT reduction, which is why you see her literally skip turns. Uh, this is incredibly good, and this is what allows Ray to specialize as a scout. On top of that, um, <clears throat> she has a mastery set called Bomber. This is going to give her excitement for using Reckless Charge. So every three or so turns, you want to be doing this anyway. And uh, of course you want to prime with Trance. Trance is one of the core abilities for uh, Grenadier for sure. And uh, this is just going to increase her stats all around, as well as give her instant access to Overcharge. Uh, it's such an amazing class and you know we're going to dive a little bit deeper now. And what would Grenadier be without grenades? Um, this is probably the most well-known grenade of all, and uh, for good reason. Um, this is the EMP grenade, and this will basically take any kind of robot and completely shut it down, whether it be Destron, Kron, or just Bicron. Um, it's absolutely devastating and highly recommended for newer players that are kind of just getting their hands wet into uh, 50 Violent. Uh, but she has a slew of other grenades. She also has the Ice Grenade. Um, this is particularly good on bosses and just controlling the action time board. Uh, you'll see it's going to be throwing out Frostbite here, which is a nice effect. But uh, notice the amount of action time delay she's giving. She's doing a whopping 80 AT delay on top of another 10 that comes afterwards for a total of 90 AT. This is absolutely murder for kind of like bosses and just units you don't want to deal with. Additionally, I found a lot of use recently in web grenades. Um, you know, this this is way more uh, applications than initially thought, and uh, it's absolutely massive. It, it puts Sticky Spider Web on, and if you guys aren't uh, familiar with Sticky Spider Web, you have to remove it first before you can move. So this is particularly devastating on, you know, like the Drifter Clowns, just as primary enemy right now, as well as, you know, Crabs on 52 Violent. Uh, it really is an absolutely devastating grenade. And then even on top of that, even after they remove the spider web, it's also giving block and dodge shreds. So notice right here, um, you know, Ray's just putting a grenade uh, spray shot right in the middle here. Not one of them even has 1% block. This white clowns, black clowns, mass, all of them dead in just one single shot. Absolutely nasty. Of course, at the core of Ray's kit is Trance. Uh, trance is an absolutely insane ability. Um, of course, uh, many players know it as just the way to get easy overcharge, but it's so much more than that. Uh, for starters, most characters need the Mastery Set Awaken to be able to go straight into overcharge, so you don't have to spend any Mastery slots on that. Uh, on top of that, Trance is going to give you a speed, armor, resist, and attack damage increase if you keep it up. 
Uh, Ray is the only character in the game that can extend her own overcharge duration. Uh, assuming you get kills, this is basically a permanent buff. Uh, but also something I wanted to show you guys is right here, uh, Ray's class mastery is called Take Aim. And uh, what this is going to do... Wow, if I could just get it. <laughs> if, uh, what this is going to do is increase damage on the radius of the center target of her grenade. So um, right here, you can see we're one tile clicking underneath the sniper. And we're at 2,000 damage with 5,000 crit. And we're going to move it up one here. And notice the damage changed to 2,500 to 6,000. This is important when you're doing your calculations. If you have a boss that you really need dead, you need to be clicking on them directly, uh, which will obviously help so much in the damage department um so you'll notice at the moment we're currently at one stack of charge and uh getting a kill is going to increase that like i mentioned earlier so now she's at two stacks but she did kill three units and that's because it was all three in one turn uh sometimes you want to spread it out and here's what's neat so you guys remember i told you about take aim and it being um you know taking more damage in the middle tile. I'm actually going to shoot between these two. And Ray has this interesting ability uh, where you sometimes want to reduce the amount of damage you're doing, kind of like Albus with Tornado Slash. Sometimes you want both hits to get a full uh, action point reset. So I actually do this in between this rogue and this uh, smuggler or scoundrel. And um, notice that the scoundrel lives, but the rogue dies. That then triggers one shot, one kill from the rogue. But... Ray also has a mastery set called Perfectionist. Perfectionist is going to allow her to, if she's dealt damage to a target before and she kills them, she's going to get another action point back, like you see right there, and not have to rely on one shot, one kill. Uh, absolutely insane, and her, her kit is by far one of the strongest in the game. Ray's kit is absolutely loaded with utility, and it's just, it really is insane. So we're here on uh, 52 Violent, find, fighting some crabos. We're going to drop a uh, spray shot right in the middle of some of these crabs on the bottom here. Um, because spray shot kind of has a bonus to critical damage, uh, you're going to see her take out most of them but one. Um, but notice, had they lived, uh, they would have actually had all their buffs uh, cleared, and that's actually due to graffiti. This is particularly useful against, uh, you know, other bosses like think like Wei. You can take off his patience or concentration. Renzi, you can take off of his frenzy. Um, and this is really good if you're not running any witches in your party, such as Anne or BB, where they would be stealing their buffs. Um, you see Kylie follow up on the attack there, and. That's another thing that makes uh, Ray incredibly ridiculous utility as well is she has she's tied for the highest bonding slots in the game. Uh, she's of course tied with Sion, and right here we're gonna hit this middle pack of uh, crabs right here. And uh, for starters, she doesn't kill any right, but she does dispel all of their buffs, which is great. You're gonna see Giselle fo uh, follow up with a pincer attack. You're going to see the drone uh, follow up with the fire support. Hey Zing's going to follow up with the fire support. Giselle's going to follow up with the fire support. So, uh, you know, it it's just absolutely crazy. And it kind of drives home how important team synergy is, uh, especially from the perspective of Ray or Scion. Uh, you really want to put them in positions where they're kind of encompassing the whole team together. And you'll put these kinds of situations is where they really shine. And one of the major updates to the build, um, so, and this is one of the main reasons I wanted to redo the video. Right here, we're fighting Schwartz Destron, and uh, we're about to use Spray Rain, which of course is a four hit attack. Um, you can see down there at the bottom, if she were to do a regular hit, it would hit for 523, which, mind you, would not even do any damage thanks to uh, Schwartz Destron's special armor. On top of that, her crit uh, will be about 1,000 damage per hit for about a total of 4,000, which isn't bad. The majority of this is actually getting blown away on crit damage, actually, by an ability called Elasticity that Schwartz Destron has. Uh, elasticity is absolutely nuts and literally halves the damage of any crit damage that you would be doing. Um, absolutely insane but what i've done is recreate this entire thing uh with a mastery called trained attack and so just for reference you know she's doing 90.2 percent crit damage she's uh schwartz destron is emp'd and she's not taking into account um uh take aim and so here we are same exact board same exact gear schwartz destron is emp'd uh it, there is no take aim can't even reach it from this point 
90.2 crit damage percent, just like the exact same as before, except for now that we have now we have trained attack on. Notice the damage increase. So we're going from not even bypassing special armor on the base damage to 1300 for a regular hit. Absolutely crazy. And then of course, even with elasticity, uh, she's doing 2453. Uh, this, of course, is more than a quarter of his health, which damage absorb gives him. And this amount of damage allows Ray to basically one-shot Schwartz if he's EMP'd. Uh, this is absolutely nuts, and uh, this is such an important ability that our newer players need to see and try and use for themselves. But really, that's just insane. All right, and we have the abilities overview. Um... You'll notice in her basic abilities, she does not have her spray can, and that's actually dependent on the spray can that you have. Uh, kind of really odd that they did it in the way that they did. And your basic ability will change based on that spray can. We'll go over that a little bit uh, in the next section. But ultimately, um, for the actual sprays between healing, vigor recovery, and awakening, uh, this is up to the player. I don't think there's any preference. Um, you know, if, if you don't really use overcharge as much on your other characters awakening spray can be pretty good uh, especially when you need it um i most of my characters have a way to overcharge on their own so i've been sticking with these two and i particularly like healing spray because it just heals the full amount of health it's not like with Anne, where you know if she doesn't crit she might heal for like 700 or a thousand this is just going to be the full amount no matter what uh really good as well as the uh, vigor recovery spray um I would just say, you know, you can either have Ray pay 30 cast delay or, you know, whatever unit can actually uh, do Vigor Restoration, which is 100 cast delay, or you can just use a Vigor Potion. Generally, I don't use these too often, but occasionally they say use. Uh, for general abilities, my recommendation is going to be Healing Mist, Spray Shoot, and Trance. Um... We'll go over the abilities that I don't recommend. So, Power Kick is pretty good, and uh, notice it is being reinforced by Trained Attack. Uh, on top of this, for the players that don't know, this is also Ray's uh, responsive slash counter, so you could make a meme for stallment build. Uh, I kind of putzed around with it, and it's funny. Uh, it's not terrible, it's just not as good as these three. Uh, you know, Trance and Spray Shoot are mandatory. Healing Mist is the only maybe. Um, but yeah, it's it's not bad and uh, does pull from a full attack power build, so maybe keep that in mind if you do go to try and make that. Um, Ice Mist and Acidic Cloud are actually not bad because they're also pulling from Trained Attack. Uh, you can see that base damage all the way up at around 700. Um, you will want to use a different type of uh, spray, you know, like a ice or fire spray, uh, because it is pulling 100% ESP power. And honestly, these two aren't bad. I'm just building around attack power. Uh, and I'm building around attack power based on spray rain. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but, of course, trance, this is just mandatory. Uh, I think this is mandatory on Alchemist. So, really, it's just mandatory on uh, Ray in general. Uh, one of the best, if not, you know, one of the best, if not the best support ability in the game. Um, you know, overcharge, plus you can stack overcharge, plus incredible amount of stats. Uh, you know, it's just amazing. And you'll want to keep this up pretty much 24-7. Uh, spray shoot. Um, this actually gets quite a bit from trained attack as well. Notice the 850 basic damage power there. Uh, interesting to note, it does split attack and ESP. So for spray shoot, it doesn't really matter which uh, spray can you're using. Um, you'll also get bonus critical hit damage. So this will be like, you know, if you need a little bit more oomph, uh, spray shoot is definitely the way to go. Uh, damage increased by tile and of course bonus damage in still stance. Uh, you know, this is Bread and butter for Ray for sure. Uh, and then I take Healing Mist mostly because it's percent heal, um, you know, over three turns. So you can kind of pre-game with this. Uh, you know, you can t toss a regen on somebody, an Albus, and, and Albus leaves and goes and kills whatever, and he's still got a heal going on in the background. I'd be surprised how good this is. It also has pretty decent healing in general. Um, and then, of course, for SP ability, uh, there's only one you can pick, Spray Rain. This is absolutely nuts ability. Um... Notice in Trained Attack, it's putting a whopping increase of 1,200 damage, uh, and that's for each individual hit. 
uh, four separate hits at a basic of 1200. And of course, this amount can increase based on how many class masteries you'll be using in trained attack. Um, additionally, and this is insane too, 100% damage uh, while in still stance, 100% damage for exposed state, uh, damage increased by 3% per tile, increased hit chance. This is such a ridiculous ability for consecutive attacks. Uh, you know, it's just insane. Uh, you know, the only downside is that you will have to bust your trance, um, you know, whatever account that you're at. Uh, and But sometimes, you know, you have to or you need to. And, uh, you know, as long as there's a, there's a good reason for it, I think it's worth taking down trance. And we have the stats, person masteries, and equipment. So uh, for personal masteries, um, we're going to be taking graffiti, and I do recommend this on Ray. Uh, the other two... Are okay. Expansion pack is more for alchemist. Uh, you know, if Ray is kind of your primary healer, uh, instead of Anne being on white mage, this would definitely be a pretty good uh, personal mastery. Um, Vivacious is not bad. It's just also not good. You know, increased vigor. Maybe in the beginning of the game, not bad. And removing uh, or dispelling mental debuffs also not bad. On let's say 47 violent, where you're dealing with frogs that have curse. Um, it's okay. Uh, but as a whole, Graffiti is really good. It's particularly designed for taking down bosses. Um, does amazing dispelling uh, debuffs and just or buffs and just awesome in general. Um, so for her class mastery, uh, like we mentioned before, take aim. Uh, Going to increase your damage at the center of your radial, radial attack ability by about 50%. Uh, you're not going to see a direct 50% increase to damage because of armor and defense reductions, but it is still going to be a de decent increase, and it's worth taking note for sure. Um, she is a spirit user, and this is highly important because she can instantly overcharge without needing to use awaken. Um, we'll go into uh, this a little bit later. For the abilities that, that aren't shown, though, on the abilities page, um, Hit and Run's actually not bad. I would just say keep in mind that you cannot use this if you regain an action point. So, for example, if you wanted to, like, hit and you're not sure if you're going to kill um, and you end up killing but you had popped Hit and Run before, it's not going to give you... Uh, the normal hit and run back and this does get buffed by masteries to where you can move pretty far um, And additionally like I was mentioning before Your basic attack is going to be dependent on your spray can so right here um, Notice it is getting trained attack throwing fast throwing high all the abilities that would uh, normally affect a attack type slot here um, But you know if I were to cha change from arms alchemy spray to ice spray Notice my attack ability changed as well. Uh, it's very, very odd how they did this. I'm not really sure what they were going for, but um, of course, an ice spray um, has a focus on ESP power. So this is where you'd see really good use out of using ice mist or acidic cloud. I'm sure there's a magic build out there somewhere. Now, the reason why I don't entirely recommend that is because of spray rain. Um, spray rain only pulls attack power it has zero esp power so even though spray shoot's not bad you know it's 50 50 right there um if you were to switch to ice spray you will not get a change in attack power to spray rain whereas you will get a change in attack power to basic attack there so uh that's of course up to the player but my recommendation definitely go full attack power um yeah so uh let's hit the grenades really quick um so I would say that my top three grenades as far as usefulness would be, of course, the EMP grenade for the Destrons. Uh, Spiderweb grenade, which I showed you guys, is absolutely nuts at the current moment in time with all the Drifter Clowns and Crabs. You'd be amazed what you can do with this grenade and how much it shuts down units as well. Uh, just awesome. And then, of course, Ice Grenade to control the action time board. Negative 90 AT on a boss is absolutely devastating. Um, but... Every other grenade, more or less, I consider less useful, uh, with the least useful being acidic at the moment, which is going to um, decrease healing amounts and increase damage taken. The damage taken is not bad. Um, the decrease in healing amounts, very few units actually heal in this game. You'll actually find more units that have life drain than you will units with, you know, like... Uh, the albino nagori can heal and the draki queen can heal but it's really really rare um incendiary grenade i actually thought that this would explode into fire everywhere kind of like a joy of burning style it's not it's really bad 
Um, <laughs> I don't like it at all anymore. Wind pressure has some interesting uses. Of course, you can knock people into walls. You can move web and gas and cloud. So uh, not bad. It's just would never take a primary slot for me anymore. Um, and then finally, frag grenade is not bad. And uh, interesting to note, um, it is pulling from trained attack on top of pulling from upgraded grenade. So you'll notice it's currently dealing 3,000 blunt damage in the target area. And if you wanted to, you could probably do a meme build of trained attack and forcing nothing but class masteries on her to probably get a frag grenade somewhere in the realm of 3,500 blunt, which is not bad, even with armor considered. Um, and uh, on top of that, not only is it you know much higher damage, but you could do um, you know special team builds where you have... Albus and Elisa running a uh, bloodbath and then maybe hazing and Giselle uh, Giselle on sniper and hazing on sweeper running a uh, blood red bullet where you know you throw this in all the targets are bleeding and then your cleanup team comes through and just murders everything that's not a terrible idea I just don't use it that's too many uh, factors honestly um, for stats uh, Health, Vigor, you know, she has average health, which is good. I, I like to be about 2,500. Uh, she can take a hit, just not too many hits. She's not a tank. Um, vigor, actually, Ray generally has low Vigor for me. And that's because Trance, again, uh, is giving Vigor recovery by 10 each turn. So keep that in mind. Uh, Spirit, again, so incredibly important on her. And we're going to be doing somewhat of a Spirit build here. And uh, this will take effect uh, in the next section, the Mastery page. Uh, attack power, not bad. Hit chance, not bad. Crit chance, again, uh, she's going to be having Reckless Charge trigger excitement, so she's actually at 99%, so she only has a 1% chance to not crit, even on a target with Keen Sense, so that's not bad. Uh, you will see that she has lower crit damage, and I do consider this 180 to be high for Ray. Um, you know, you could go a little bit farther with the weapon, uh, but for defensive stats, uh, really... Not that good in my build, but my builds are usually uh, heavily offense-oriented. Um, dodge, of course, incredibly important, and we're going to go into this uh, much more in depth as the mastery page goes in. Um, for weapons, uh, really up to the player. Um, I, again, I I really recommend attack power grenades. Uh, that's up to you. Um, you know, of course, you could get like a bonus crit and stuff like that. I will recommend the following affixes for Ray: uh, Peak, Rapid, Limitless, and Shadow. Um, Ray is one of the few characters that can get use out of Peak by increasing more Spirit SP and then converting that into, you know, Block Shred or what have you, Hit Chance, all that jazz. And you know, what you see for Hit Chance is not um, taking into account that as soon as she hits, you know, Trance, she's converting 200 SP into Hit Chance. So, you know, that that's always uh, awesome. Um, but yeah, for gearing, uh, I, you know, fill it in with whatever slots you'd like. I do, I have a problem here with Black Iron Flame Boots. This is always a toss-up between that and the Ar Arms Alchemy Boots. Um, Arms Alchemy Boots, of course, is immunity to field effect. And right now there's field effect everywhere. You know, if you go into the crabs, it's just, it's just mind-blowing how crazy it is. Um, but the Black Iron Flame Boots give critical hit damage plus 30%. And again, so hard for Ray to actually get critical hit damage. You could do it all in on weapon as well. Um, and, uh, you know, that's really up to the player. Potion, again, also up to the player. Uh, I happen to like Giant Potion because it's a nine turn duration for 500 attack power as long as you're willing to sacrifice some dodge. Uh, very interesting potion and uh, used quite often in game. A lot of my characters run excitement now, so uh, or have their own self excitement. Um, and then finally, uh, legendary gear. Um, I'm actually taking the 100 SP increase by Golden Main, but there's tons of abilities you could do from this. Uh, that's up to you. You know, if you're hurting for uh, vigor, of course you could do Jackie's Shining Skill. If you want a little bit more defense on her, perfect skill. Uh, you know, and th and that goes for. Um, Hanson's suit jacket of Twilight Collector. Again, this is giving critical hit damage. Very hard to find for Ray, and uh, you know allows her to do opens up her damage kit a lot higher. Um, but you know, like if this were on Alchemist or more defensive Ray, I would definitely recommend a skull jacket. Uh, you know, this one would give 24% dodge added onto you know being in bush and uh, all the other masters and stuff that come into play.
And we have the mastery board. Uh, so this is the Big Booms 2 build. Uh, of course, feel free to pause uh, at any time. Take a look, take a gainer, see what you'd keep, see what you'd throw out. But keep in mind, this is one of two builds where I don't recommend that you change a single thing. Uh, so with that in mind, let's get into the core offensive mastery. So um, we're going to be taking Perfectionist for very obvious reasons. Uh, identical target is going to allow so that when you put a target out of action, whom you hit before, you'll recover an action point. Uh, that's incredibly ridiculous and kind of showed you guys earlier, but uh, this is such a nuts ability and absolutely mandatory. Um, we're also going to be taking Penetrate the Sky. This is a great set. Uh, this adds to Raid's block shred that you wouldn't normally think like a Grenadier class would have. Um, so if your average target is at about 10 tiles, uh, which it can be very normal for Ray. That's going to be a 30% block shred. Uh, so that's absolutely awesome and uh, totally mandatory. It's also going to include um, throwing fast. And this is very underrated. You can see throwing fast is everywhere throughout this board. Um, but it's going to reduce your vigor costs as well as your cast delay times. And uh, just amazing. Um, we're also going to be taking trained attack for very obvious reasons. That massive change in damage. So just to give you guys an idea... Um, Spray Rain right now, look at the base damage of 1190 per hit, uh, or Spray Shoots 850 uh, base damage there. And if we were to remove that from at least this current board, uh, that'll go down to 350. Remember, 1190 to 350, and then regular Spray Shoot 250 uh, as opposed to 850. So it's a massive, ridiculous ability. Um, it uh, applies to every attack ability and that's very going to be an interesting note later on down the line here uh, but it's also going to do a cast delay uh, decrease to make Ray even faster and she's already blazing fast but such an amazing ability and uh, glad to put this in this is one of the two major changes to the big booms build um, we're also going to be taking Sharp Spirit, and uh, like I mentioned before, um, I am going to be running Golden Main, which is going to give you 200 Spirit SP. Uh, Trance just takes you straight to 200. That means you're going to get that 0.2 um, more increase to Block Shred, which is approximately 40% block. So if you're hitting a target from 10 tiles, you're going to have at a minimum 70% uh, Block Shred uh, adding in with Penetrated penetrate the sky so just absolutely nuts and you could expand this even further and we'll go into that for alternative masteries and then of course um as always the staple one shot one kill and for core defensive masteries we're going to be taking of course opportunist uh, this is such a nuts ability and um at its base is really all about quick reaction uh very simple if you dodge an attack on ray you'll get 15 at and this is so good uh off and on turn um and then Opportunist then takes it further, decreasing it by 25 AT. Uh, absolutely nuts. Um, even on top of that, uh, activating Reckless Charge will trigger uh, tr that triggers Conceal if you can conceal where you stand. So as long as you're next to a wall while running, while activating Reckless Charge, you're going to get Conceal. And uh, on top of that, it's also going to increase your dodge chance. It's all about. This is by far one of the best defensive masteries in the game. Um, you're going to get that block increase by 50%, which obviously is nuts. Uh, but you're also going to get that decrease in hit chance. And we're going to go over that in just a sec. Um, but as far as other core defensive masteries, uh, we're actually going to be taking positioning. And uh, we'll go over this more in the core support. But one piece of positioning, uh, blind spot, is going to be an incredible boon for Ray. Um, so this is going to reduce hit chance of an adversary by 2% per distance of tile from the attacker. And for our newer players, uh, just so you guys know, even melee units like the Drifter, Clowns, and Crabs, if they're using a dashing attack, it will count as distance traveled per tile. So let's say, you know, if it's 10 tiles, then uh, they're going to have their hit chance reduced by 20%. And this is very interesting um, to note. So we're going to go into the difference between dodge versus negative hit chance and i'm going to show you guys why you want negative hit chance more um so uh, in normal combat let's just say 50 violent you're going to deal with mercenary sharpshooters uh which i'm sure you already have and of course they have prior planning 
And so prior planning uh, upon attacking a target, targets dodge chance have. So they murder dodge chance if you stack dodge chance. And then they have predicted fire as well, uh, also murdering dodge and block chance, right? But what they can't murder is negative hit chance. And this is where all of those abilities kind of come together. So, um, of course, from conceal, you're going to get negative hit chance, which is part of opportunist there. You can see it at the, the bottom. You're going to get a blind spot, like I mentioned, from positioning, which will be 2% uh, per tile. If you happen to be in bush, uh, you're going to get 20% uh, negative hit chance. Now, see, notice the end result is a dodge. Uh, but it's not 20% bonus to dodge, it's negative 20% to hit chance. So you're taking this conceal that's 10, you're taking this bush that's 20, you're taking this blind stop spot that's 2% per pal. Hell, uh, you can even add in the fact that um, smoke grenades are usually everywhere on the battlefield. So uh, take smoke grenade, uh, negative 40% ranged attack ability hit chance. Uh, so... You know, it, you don't even have to carry this because, you know, the clown, Drifter Clowns use these all the time. But when you add all this up and then you add in even my really bad uh, kind of 40% dodge rate on Ray, you're looking at a negative 100% hit chance most of the time. And that negative 100% hit chance basically turns into, right at the, back at the beginning, quick reaction, dodging an attack. Uh, so that's what makes it really insane. And... Um, Ray has choice of defensive position at all times now due to Reckless Charge and the combination of best condition and run that I showed you guys. So you should always be on a bush. You should always be on a wall with Conceal. Uh, just absolutely insane. All right, and we have the defensive showcase. Uh, so this is a video that I've shown before, but the core concept is exactly the same. Um, so right here we have Ray and, uh, of course, in a bush against a wall like you guys should always be doing. And we have a uh, scoundrel or smuggler or whatever coming over and he's going to try and uh, attack. Uh, he's just going to naturally miss. Now this sniper is going to fire support and, uh, you know, back him up. That's going to trigger lightning reflexes, and that's already in uh, built into opportunist as well as pierce through the battlefield. Now we're not and we're not running swift footwork anymore, but notice the AT increase. So, um, you know, you're going to be getting 25, uh, of course, from quick reaction, 25 from a second quick reaction. Had you had had uh, swift footwork, it would have been another 20. But negative 50 AT off turn is not bad, and honestly, if you can push Ray above 50 AT, it's quite a feat. Um, but what's particularly interesting here, I mean, aside from a myriad of defensive abilities, we're going to uh, actually counter, basically, with, um, with an attack now that her turn is up. But here's the thing. Her turn being up has reset her lightning reflexes again. So he's going to forestallment and miss, right? Uh, fire support's going to go off, and she's going to get lightning reflexes again because of the turn count. Um, you know, just absolutely nuts. And if you guys can imagine now with blind spot on, um, you know, making sure that you always have conceal, being in a bush, uh, you know, potentially moving into smoke grenades, you're going to have this absolutely devastating, more or less dodge chance uh, that's going to basically always give Ray her turn. And every time she gets her turn, this kind of stuff happens. So just insane. And we have core support mastery. So um, Pierce Through the Battlefield is so insane. This is basically a chance to win on everything for Ray. Uh, you can't go wrong. It's increased the speed. It's increased the move. It's just Ray at its core and just stunning. Um, you know, if you run, you get chance to win. If you get quick reaction, you get chance to win. If you trigger lightning reflexes, you get chance to win. Triggering light re reflexes with quick reaction because they go together you know, that's two chance to win. It's just chance to win all the time, every time. Uh, increase the speed, hit chance, crit chance, and attack damage. Easy to stack up to 10, and uh, just absurd. Just totally absurd. Um, we're also going to be taking Opportunity Creator. Uh, this is going to be primarily for nimble preparation and the AT decrease. Uh, this is, you know, just awesome to have in general. And then the second major change to the build, uh, we're going to be taking Positioning. And uh, this is going to be uh, AT reduction on still stance and or elevated position. And this has very interesting benefits. Um, one, of course, uh, it does 
team with position advantage so if you look up and down her board position advantage is everywhere so it has great synergy with mastery board um so close yet so far again you know this whole penetrate the sky distance travel damage increase is going to multiply again uh blind spot like i already explained earlier and then of course uh, concentration for an increased crit chance can't really hurt along with the at reduction uh it's just, it synergizes so well as a whole, and I have a uh, quick video for that just to show real quick. But, um, so here we are in 50 Violent, and I just wanted to show you guys the difference in AT. So, um, even though trained attack is awesome, along with uh, throwing fast, they only apply to attack abilities. They do not apply to trance, which is a support ability. And if you notice right here, uh, no, it's probably kind of hard to see, but Ray is going from 40 usual AT into 70, and that's because she casts a trance. Now, of course, um, when she goes to attack, uh, spray shoot's going to be, you know, plus 5, plus 7 or so. She's at 75 AT. But after she hits, due to position advantage and opportunity creator and all that stuff, look at it now. She's now at 36, which of course is the uh, minimum AT delay that you can possibly have. Uh, on top of that, of course, best condition will go off now that it's the end of her turn. And then you have Ray at some, you know, a ridiculous 26 or less AT modifier. Uh, just absolutely insane. And then finally for the alternative mastery sets again i really recommend this board it was designed with many synergies in mind uh but out of curiosity you know if you want to mess around and this was in the original board but uh swift footwork is definitely a great choice uh for kind of a few reasons um obviously the increase to lightning reflex action time is nuts. Uh, the dodge chance increase, which is nice. Again, I changed that out for the negative hit chance because it's just better. And dodge right now gets shredded, uh, not and not just by you know the sharpshooters. Even the black clowns have prior planning, believe it or not. So that's why that's kind of out. Um, also, uh, catharsis would of course be amazing um, if you could fit it on. Uh, this would give you quicker spray shoots and quicker trances trance does have a rather uh high cooldown rate so you know you do kind of want to keep it on for at least a few turns before you get enough kills and resets and stuff like that um but catharsis would definitely be a good benefit and then finally uh if you were really ornery and maybe you just absolutely hate block with a burning passion you could probably just take off one shot one kill and put on extreme will um, this of course will multiply the effect of spirit sp by two and increase maximum sp by 50 so in the current board that i have um of course we have 200 sp and with uh, sharp spirit that's going to be a total of 40 percent block shred but in the interest of going absolutely overkill this would improve it to 250 sp the spirit effect would be multiplied by two so instead of uh, 0.2 it'd be 0.4 and at 250 sp that'd be basically 100 percent block shred uh so along with penetrate the sky it's just total overkill and what this board does basically allows ray to take out uh white clowns more or less with minimal effort and not getting blocked uh adding this yeah you might be able to you know have zero block on Zhao's eye but is it really that necessary you know like is it is it that mandatory to to do that much block shred uh i don't particularly think so and it's all about you know kind of the average gameplay so um that's why I don't consider that. But those, all three of those are very good alternative masteries. All right, guys. And we have the Big Boom Showcase. This is actually the same showcase as the original one. And um, what I'm going to do is just modify it uh, vo verbally uh, just to show you guys the difference. And uh, this is also just such good video footage that I absolutely wanted to. And keep in mind that this is not adding in trained attack and or positioning. Uh, so right here in the, the first video, we actually had Overwhelming Spirit, and this was getting negative 25% block. But if you scratch that out and just pretend that that's not there, Break Through the Dead Angle is giving negative 10% uh, block uh, shred on Zhao Zai. Uh, delayed Throwing, 20%, so that's negative 30%. Penetrate the Sky, it looks like 12 tiles is going to be 36. So we have a 66% block shred. And then, of course, with Overwhelming Spirit, that's going to be giving a 25, which puts her at 91. And Zhao Zai has a 4% block, right? So he's currently running 95% block. Now, if you were to scratch out Overwhelming Spirit, 
you have that 66% block shred, you add in the new Sharp Spirit build that we've been running, uh, that's 40% block shred, that puts this 4% at zero. Uh, so absolutely insane, and you know, Jezai is naturally known for highest block in the game. He gets a lot more higher block as you get closer to him, so that's part of the reason why Ray is also so good and, you know, penetrate the sky, and he happens to be taking cover, so it's, you know, triggering all these other abilities. But um, right here, she's going to take her shot. She is going to kill the two guys on the side, but she's not going to kill Jezai, and the difference here in the trained attack would be he would just die. 0% uh, block chance and that extra bonus damage that would be coming in along with bonus critical damage. And um, right there, of course, you see uh, she's also dispelling uh, you know, boss debuffs like we mentioned before. Frenzy and Rage from Graffiti. Just totally awesome. Uh, unfortunately, Giselle misses. And so at this point, we're going to take the time to uh, increase her trance stack. So she's at 2 after killing the two dudes from there. Uh, this is going to uh, increase it to three turns of, of trance stacking right here. Uh, killing this guy is going to increase to four. But look at notice that uh, I did not notice that there was a uh, mercenary over here. Uh, and that's one of the great effects of doing area damage with Ray. Uh, so she's going to kill this dude. Uh, she's going to get four stacks of trance. And then this guy is actually going to move forward because of Berserker stance. And whether he had moved uh, forward or not, she still would have been able to hit him even out of line of sight. And of course, because of Perfectionist, this is going to allow her to kill him and get her action point back. Uh, and of course, this whole time, nimble preparation, if you can see, is uh, lowering her cooldowns on spray shoot. You know, So it's just absolutely nuts. And um, it only got stronger with the addition of trained attack and positioning, and uh, I, I can't recommend this enough. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. Uh, I do consider Ray's Grenadier to be one of the top five classes in Troubleshooter. Uh, it's just totally insane. You know, this is five out of 22 classes, of course, but, uh, you know, she has insane damage. She has insane utility. She has block shred. She has crazy move, uh, you know, massive amounts of move. She can scout, she can get her turn back, she has off turn AT dodge, like it's just wild. Um, she's such a powerful character and uh, so excited to share this video with you guys. Um, as always, if you guys like the video, please like and subscribe, follow me on Twitch and YouTube, and uh, until next time.